World Tell presents International Cricket, the Pepsi Australasia Cup from Sharjah in the United Arab Emirates. Hello, good morning and welcome to Pepsi Australasia Cup Final Day at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. It's India against Pakistan, two of the best one-day sides in the world, as a fitting climax to what has been a thrilling competition. It won't be a day for the faint-hearted either, as Salim Malik's outstanding Pakistanis take on Mohammed Azaruddin's exciting young Indians before a vibrant crowd. The atmosphere is already building. Now, let's have a look at the teams. There are no changes to either. India are playing the same side that beat Australia in their semi-final, and the Pakistanis have stuck to the same 11 who overwhelmed New Zealand in the second semi-final. So, the scene is set. Now, let's all settle back and really enjoy the first innings. And there's the first ball, and it's played to squarely. For mid on, one for no wicket. Flashes, misses, through to the keeper, and one for no wicket at the end of the second. That's a big outside edge, it's coming down the pen, and it's four runs. Upish, and as Glenn was saying, another slip. And that could have been trouble for the batsman. Yes, well, that would have gone to a second slip, unquestionably. Fine shot, past the bowler on the outside. It's going to be four runs to the long off boundary. The Dade will not cut it off. 12 for no wicket, Pakistan in double figures. his legs well, three more to Sahel. But it's just flipped that way. Disdainfully, he's really moving into gear now. And the pressure is easing on Pakistan. So Venkat Prasad has started so well, now looking a little iffy. And even more so after that, now Saeed Anwar takes up the challenge as four more and now the danger signs are there for India and that's gone superbly timed he just leant on it and away it went that's certainly the shot of the morning there's no doubt about it that delivery we'll see uh, Amir Sahel coming forward to it it wasn't really half one it was on the top that was definitely the best shot so far middling the ball and speeding to the boundary line beautiful shot slot for him, right across front foot, just helping the ball. He was lucky to survive early on, but now he's taking advantage. Srinath will have to do something different if he wants to get rid of this man. Well, I think that shot is being played irrespective of that shot. And there it is. There's no doubt about it. That was a no ball. Yes, a definite edge. Anyway, here is Kumble to Sohel. And that's four runs. The first ball misdirected down the leg side, swept. And it doesn't matter to Sohel this morning who the bowler is. They all go the same way. The end of another highly 
productive over for Pakistan, 61 for no wicket. Rassad. Oh, no, but was put down there in the gully by Azaruddin. Went very fast, but otherwise... It's one of those rare occasions I've seen Azaruddin dropping this sort of straightforward catch. There's Azaruddin. It won't be making him feel too happy. He's standing at slip. What a marvellous strike. It was well up to Saeed Anwar. He hit it very hard into the mid-off gap for four. And Saeed Anwar there faced Spartak. And that's going to be four. Down to the... Long leg boundary, beautifully turned. Cut square of the wicket, it's going to be four to the deep backward point boundary. And Said Anwar now cutting loose after a quiet and a shaky start. And the wicket he comes, it is going to be a six, is it? We'll have to wait for the umpire signal. And it is a six. The crowd tell it all. Look how he fixes this. He knows there's a long arm out there. He hit more across it to get it wide of that fielder. And that's perfection in placement. But in the end, he probably didn't need to place it because it went into the stand. Swept and swept fine. Siddhu running around. Gets to it. Returns. And just a single. 90 for no wicket. And there you see the batting analysis for Pakistan. A slow start, then suddenly the Manhattan goes all over the place. Down the wicket he comes, it's up in the air. He could be out caught. And he's gone. He's out caught by Passat at long off. And Pakistan's first wicket has fallen. Saeed Anwar is out. Saeed Anwar just taking too much of a chance here. Tries to hit it over long off for six. Or well, maybe he went towards mid-wicket. I would suspect that was the case. But we have Prasad. And look how he looks anxiously after he takes it to see where the boundary is. He looked around there, but he was clearly inside. A delighted Prasad. Pakistan lose their first wicket at 96. Let's watch that again. What's the say downward? He did try to hit that over mid-wicket. That's where the gap was. But the, he got an outside middle on it, which carried a long way down to long on and Prasad. Safe enough. That was an important wicket. Yes, I think uh, that's what India needed. They needed that break badly because both the opening batsmen gave Pakistan such a flying start. And obviously, Saeedanwa was the one Pakistan really wanted to get rid of and they did manage. So Salim will be absolutely thrilled with the way this has started. So 2 saving one on the off, two on the on. In the mark. Gets off the mark. That's his 52. Seems to be very pleased. Our Mr. Ham who started in a glorious fashion. He played some magnificent shots. And here, Tendulka is straying down the leg side with no one to protect the fine leg boundary, managing to pick up four runs. And with it, his 50 coming up. 51 to Amir Sahel. Well played. So Hale will be looking to get on with it again now. Swings that around, it's Sidhu down there. Just drifting down leg side. And he sometimes is a little dangerous early on with that leading edge. He just might get a side edge and up it goes. If you weren't aware, it was Monk here. 112 for one off 22. 
There is Tendulka. Any team would love to have him. He's such a live wire. Tremendous batsman, brilliant fielder, and a useful bowler. He's hit that square. Campbell making the move. Oh, yes, excellent footwork. They're through for three. He's such a swift mover, Campbell. It's a nice piece of fielding there. They will see Inzimam going for the big hit. Again, not really timing it. And as I said earlier on, he needs to slightly concentrate a bit more. Nice, nice piece of footwork by Kamli. From Dalka to Sahel. Typical flashing drive. Kumble is the fielder. And they come back for the second. Although a good throw makes Inzimam or Huck run a little bit faster than he usually does. What, 20, 25,000 people in the ground now? It really is a big crowd. And Chauhan to bowl to Inzimar Mohan. Tendalka by the umpire. I suppose in these circumstances, all Azarudin can do is tell his bowlers to keep plugging on, to try and keep as tight a line and length as possible and wait for something to happen. Well, I suppose so, yes. He can do anything better. piece of uh, stumping on the leg side. It's always the most difficult thing to do. It's a clever piece of bowling from Rajesh Chauhan as well. So, 125 now for two. And the new batsman, Salim Malik. And this is why Salim Malik has come in. And look at the speed there with which Mongia whipped off the bales. So, here is Chauhan to Salim Malik who's off the mark in the most stately manner. A nice push-on drive for one. And here's Inzamamal's dismissal from Stump Vision. He down the wicket, you see it. Good piece of bowling, but he had, because he had to, he went early, the batsman. Chauhan saw it and aimed the ball down the leg side in defence. Good thinking. Chauhan to Salim Malik. not out here against the West Indies. And that is a look at Sally Malik's wicket again. It was a gentle push stroke. The slowness of the wicket probably got him out, Venka. Well, I think so, yeah. The ball didn't come onto the bat and he just flicked it and uh, not getting on top of the ball. Well, this game really has turned around, hasn't it? In the best traditions of one-day cricket. Tendulkar to Basidali. And what a lovely the pure pedigree of that was lovely to see. Vidadi down there at long off, fielding. Tindalka, the bowler, in to Basidali. Oh, and that's a, what a wonderful flashing drive that was. Very well fielded there by Vinod Kambli, but he had a lot of running to do, and he's deep, and they got the second. But what a lovely stroke. Sohel's call, but it looked to me as though Basid Alice went himself. And I think he would have just have been back at that hit, but it wasn't a very good piece of cricket.
everyone was running helter-skelter, fielders, batsmen and umpires, and I thought there was going to be the father and mother of a collision, look. Better over so far in his second spell. That's the single. End of the over. One, four, nine for three. End of the 32nd. Look at that there. 18 through straightish mid off. Remember left hander, the offside's on the right of that wagon wheel. And he didn't have as many as 10 through the cover area because he tends to close the face on it a little. He bowled it! A cross bat shot, a very indiscreet one, and Sorrell is gone from the Pakistan point of view, an irresponsible shot from the Indian point of view, the breakthrough they were looking for, fourth wicket down and India on top. Sorrell struggling as I've just outlined to you, and the frustration there, and they're also... Srinath there really see the pressure on his face and his reaction in taking that wicket. So Pakistan now lose their fourth at 149. And here's the dismissal. Goes through the gate, looking to give himself a little bit of room. See that front foot went way outside leg stump. He teed off to hit it over mid-wickets. And Srinath now a relieved man. Much the bar facing. That's down to third man, he gets a single, 150 for Pakistan, coming in the 33rd over. There's the win-loss record, 11-3. India started off pretty well, but uh, latterly Pakistan seemed to have their number, but that could change today. And uh, no run. Well, they eventually do go through. 163 for four. Here's Chalam. Oh, that's a bad run. It's a ball toss. But it's in the air. I think it's going to fall safely. It has. And no ball was called. They run a couple of runs. And Chalam really has pulled a couple of poorish deliveries. In this is recall. He bowled eight overs in his first spell and took three wickets. shot there it could be four runs but it may be cut off just inside the boundary line and they go through for two he moved away past his uh, up stump and played it beautifully the good fielding again boundary riding by Kambi and that's going to go for four almost certainly once again giving himself room and lofting it over cover, 1-9-3 for four, and this could be the most decisive moment of the match with Basit Ali in charge. Well, this is Basit Ali in true form, smacking it, it almost went for six, I thought it was going to disappear up into the stand, bouncing it a couple of times, and so Basit Ali now starting to run hot, a beautiful shot my word that brings the 200 up and the crowd to their feet he short arms this just watch the way he plays it bang in at middle and leg didn't appear to be a loose delivery but a head-on collision between bat and ball straight down the ground just fetched it a little onside in fact ended up going a little wide of mid on but all the way And the wicket he comes, he's gone through for a single, it's at 50. Coming back for the second. 51 to Bassett, coming in the 45th over. He's giving so much of pleasure to these spectators. It's Srinath to Bassett. That's up in the air, he could be gone. Oh no, it's through his hands, is it? We'll have to wait for the replay to six. 
washed his hands and went over Glenn, but we'll have to wait and see. Well, Connolly was not on the boundary edge. He looked as though he was taking it easily, and he's been beaten for pace here. Look, he steadies himself. Whoa, straight through, and he tips it over the bar. He was about five metres or three metres in from the boundary here, so he had plenty of room to play with, but he steadied himself thinking that he was going to take it easily, and it blasted him away. It went through the hands, and that's six to Basad Ali. to hit him to mid-wicket. Cross bats it and just before lunch not a very good shot to play from the Pakistan point of view. A marvellous breakthrough for India and the game has swung again in India's favour. Well, what a waste for Pakistan. Basad Ali going so well and he gets knocked over here just having an absolute slog. And I'm afraid Srinath just got a little bit excited there. Anyway, that's the break. And when Pakistan were going along so nicely, we see a terrible slog like that from Basad Ali. But what a good hand he's played for his 50. Sinat loosening up after the lunch and uh, to face him. Wasima. bowled by Sirinath, that was a very good delivery, it went right through him 2-1-5 for 5, the end of the over gets an inside edge running down to long leg just a single 2-1-9 for 5 he's gone for fallen, India wanted that and uh, Akram is out court. I couldn't quite work out how this went in the air let's see on replay, it's full and wide and he just angled the bat up rather than closing the face on it and it flew with the pace of the ball from Srinath straight to Azhar. He takes the catch and now Pakistan 2-1-9 for 6 in the 47th. And that's going to be four runs Deep backward point. Said Anwar watching. 2-2-5 two, two, for 6. And as Glenn was saying, this man can hit. And that could be another call. Yes. This time it's down to third man. He played it fine up. 2-2-9 two, two, for 6. And hitting like this can change the complexion of the game. another run and Russian Latif coming back for a second he'll have to hurry but it, the throw went to the other end and uh, home for two Jadeja just a little slow possibly Russian Latif facing and that could be four the ball traveling quickly Tendulkar getting to it and it's through him a dive could have saved it 240 for six fielder lumbering after it and it's gone for four that ball ended up being a bit of a nothing ball it wasn't right up it wasn't short but it was close to the pads of Mustafa and he heaved it away over mid wicket and this is the last ball of the contest for Pakistan look at three players out there Mustafa the batsman he drives into the covers it'll be just the single and exactly 250 for six at the end of the 50th over, 2-5-1 the target. A fine partnership of 96 for the first wicket and Amir Sohail going on to reach 69. After that, the main innings played by Basid Ali, who made 57 and was then out to the ball before lunch. The bowling, well, once again, Chauhan was the best bowler of the lot. The seam bowlers took terrible punishment early on from those two left-handers. So there we are now, let's sit back and see what India can make of a target of 251.
time. But it's amazing that Wasim gets that out of bounds. shot, four runs. Now the comparative scores, there's not much in it. It's a lovely shot, four runs. Through extra cover, what a beautiful shot. Lovely movement of the feet, he stepped into that half volley and gloriously drove it. Just watch it again. The body weight coming through, not full extension of the feet, but see how the blade of the bat stays in line in the direction that he's trying to hit the ball, and that went through extra cover like a rocket. Full toss, and it's up in the air! Particularly from a delivery like that, Tendulkar will be unhappy. The Pakistanis will take it. Thank you very much. And it's interesting, Glenn, that it was uh, Sohail who let him go uh, earlier on, and this time he got it. Now there's a 
slipped on back in. We've gone back to an orthodox steal for the incoming Azaruddin. Slipping a gully back there. No short cover, no short mid wicket. So the first ball to Azaruddin. Big outside edge, down to third man. Much the bar the field. trying to steer the ball away and it only succeeded in giving a catch to the wicket keeper. Latif picking up an easy catch, 63 for three. Well, Minty sipping in the liquid. And he must be very pleasantly, I would think almost surprised at the way this match has suddenly turned around once more in his favour. But maybe there are more twists to come. He's got that away. The lightning figure around the wall. Gives chase to Hale, throws it in. Two close fielders, both in front now. Sweetly timed. This is Ali, the fielder. game in is, is uh, in balance right now where India had the advantage and then S Pakistan came back and now these two batsmen especially Vinod the two of them and Sidhu they've really uh, stabilized the Indian batting yes it's, um, it's a situation that when you've lost three wickets like this in the middle of the order you've now got to to re-establish the innings which is going to mean you're going to slow down well that's a fine stroke and of course Cambly is such a player that if the ball comes along which should be hit he will hit it whatever the situation it's Akram Raza the off spinner who's going to continue the attack delicately played but goodness me if Atta Rahman had hit the wicket with his throw then whether City would have been in or out I can't tell and I dare say it would have been the third umpire in the pavilion who would have had to tell just watch this yes I well, think that would have been out I hit. agree with you that was a very uh, good piece of feeling by Atta Rahman there's the scoring rate now India is trying to save its wickets that's why the scoring rate is dropping trying to force the pace and really didn't quite try to hit the ball for a six which is a very good hitter and nor was he able to keep it down that's classic when the batsman is in a dilemma he got a bit close to it 83 for four and the new batsman Atul Badadi only his third one day match and he'll be wanting to improve on that average won't he and on his highest score too but he's here because of this yeah here again he he didn't quite try and hit him over the top this is in fact the pressure the situation got him out rather than the ball so Kamli on 13 having faced 37 deliveries as you see there so it's been a very patient innings and now he's facing Raza should be two there if they hurry 91 for four. Just a single. Or amble across for 197 for four. And halfway mark for India almost complete. Safe enough. Just a long on. No mid on in. Going for a second, but he's safely home. So the single's beginning to come at last. 
but very few boundaries. The run rate increasing all the time. He's hit that. High and hard, that's it, that's six. Well, that was deceptive, and you can see why he hit sixes with monotonous regularity, because he just leant into that. Away it went, 111 for four. Here's the six again, just look at this. Dances down the wicket. Beautifully timed, minimum of effort, and it went way, way over. And he's gone again, and this is long, very long. Well, this is why they rate him as such an exciting prospect. This is the time that Bidadi has got to keep his cool now that he has got a six and uh, he's got to accumulate the runs. It's absolutely imperative that he keeps his wicket intact. That's up in the air, there's another six. And he just rests on his haunches, does Bidadi, as if he could do that all day. That's safe enough. Cambly looking assured now. In fact, both of them picked up the momentum without giving too many risks. That's gone wide. And it's through Mushabir, the fielder. Now, that was risky. Then Camley gives him a bit of a lecture. One, three, six for four. Benzimam, the fielder. Couple this time. Yeah, the runs are coming much more freely now. It's gone for that one. And he's over him. It's six. Akid Javid just in the road there, hoping against hope that the ball has got to come down, but not quickly enough. And another six. Four sixes he's hit now. From Pakistan's point of view, they need a wicket. It's in the air, it could be caught here, deep back for score of the years, he's out. It's Asif Mushtabar who's taken the catch, and so that is the end right in of Badadi, and he has Describe 
Linda. And the replay, look, he goes to put it on the onside. He decided he wants a single. So look at that. Now, that is, I would call that embarrassing. And he's out, caught and bowled, the most curious and strangest caught and bowled you'll ever see. So long here goes, 180 for six in there. Let's watch that again. Well, this is the sort of thing you do in the backyard when you're playing cricket, I think, and you just try and nudge it round. It's just uh, unbelievable that he should attempt that shot. Almost there. Almost like a um, stop volley in tennis when the player comes to the net. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he could have. I thought it had gone straight up in the air and was going to be caught by the keeper, but it carried him much further than that, and we ended up a court and bowl for uh, Sohail. And that is going to be two runs. Basit Ali running around. And deep back for point. Two more to come. This is square cut. Akram, the fielder in the deep. Just the single. 187 for seven. single are they going for the second yes they are coming bit of misfielding there by Akip Kavalan the Pakistan manager as I said before incessant cheering now it's up in the air and it's over mid wicket it was a full toss and the batsman coming back for the second and they've got it one I need for seven there's the scoreboard. Our batsman on five. And that's going to be four. That's 200 for India. comes into question. Let's watch it, Glenn. I think he could be out. Chowan looked to be up, but he didn't bother to ground his bat, did he, or extend his bat. Look if he extends the bat or not here. Well, perhaps I've done him an injustice, but look, it's going in the yes. air over the line. That's no good. You've got to ground it before you get there. That's definitely out. And so Chowan, not knowing how to run his bat, look here, he dabs it in. Oh, yes. His bat is high up. Yes, it's, and it must be grounded, so he must be given that. Yes, he's gone. And uh, whereas Kumle got the decision, or Kumle got the deci decision in his favour, the third umpire has given this decision in Pakistan's favour. Chohan is out. The eighth wicket is down. Two or three for eight. Certainly pitching nothing in short. Enzimam, the fielder, they're going for a couple. So I think the difference really today was that they got to a point where they tried, they didn't try and collect. They just went absolutely doggo at the crease. They didn't collect singles. They put their backs right up against the wall where they needed over six and over. But Dade then had to try and hit sixes and fours, which he did for a short time. But then just left their run chase to, with too much to do at the end. Got that into the gap. Ali, the fielder, and uh, Pakistan very much with their tails up there, sensing now victory. Their third victory, there have been three Australasia Cups now, they've won every single one. And they've been in the last eight finals of all the tournaments here in Sharjah, won six out of eight, this will be seven. or hit over mid-wickets and just a top edge and Latif coming around and taking the catch easily. Just watch here. Just slogging across the line, trying to whack it over mid-wicket, I saw Rashid Latif and he took that very comfortably indeed. So Kumli goes in near 209 for nine in the 47th. So 
So Srinath to face Malik. There's a man racing around, they'll uh, chase him. They go through for a couple. A very good start. 211 for nine. Not a very satisfactory Indian scoreboard. Their main batsmen all got themselves out rather unwisely and stupidly, and by the end, the target of 251 looked further away than it should have done. The bowling well Wazim Akram was tremendously quick, even on this dead pitch, and the rest of the bowlers did a thoroughly good job for their captain. So there we are, the end of nine days cricket. India were beaten by 39 runs in a, a really exciting final. It's been a tremendous competition. We've all very much enjoyed bringing you the highlights. We hope you've enjoyed them too. And we look forward to seeing you next time. A disappointing Indian scorecard, really. Their four main batsmen, well, they got themselves out to poor strokes, and by the end, a target of 251 looked really rather a long way away. The bowling, well, Wazim Akram was the pick of the bunch. He usually is. Uh, the others, well, they stuck to their task. They did it well, but really, they were up against nothing particularly challenging on this occasion. Well, I have with me Glenn Turner. Glenn, it was a rather disappointing final. I felt that India should have got closer to it, if not have won. Yes, well, I felt at half-time, if you like, after the uh, Pakistani innings, that 250 under these conditions should not be enough. It was a workable total, but not necessarily a winning one. And so I think at that point, India must have backed their chances. They made quite a good start, and then we saw them get into those middle stages where they had real problems. And in fact, our four main players, all of whom could have won the match, got themselves out to bad strokes. Well, they did, and there was no need for them to do that. You know, they were never really under pressure in those first, I suppose, 10 overs or 11 overs before they hit trouble, they were scoring at fives without really trying. And in fact, the irony of it was that after Pakistan were given that tremendous start in the morning, their innings then fell away. I mean, it did look for a time as though they must have finished with 280, if, even if not more. But in 250, it represented, I think, definitely a positive result for India. Yes, you can always, well, I think it was, you can always recover under conditions like this. As long as you've got six top batsmen, then there's no reason why you can't cover from losing two or three early wickets. India were not able to do that. In middle stages, for some reason, psychologically, they got it in their minds. Uh, I'm talking specifically about Bodade and also um, uh, Kambli, that they had to just stay out there and not score runs that they were not required. But you had to keep it ticking over at the same time to keep close enough as far as the runs per over was concerned. And they didn't do that. It was as though they were becalmed. And then at the end, Bodade had a bit of a whack hit one or two sixes, which put them back in the game. Then uh, Cambly got out, and they had nothing left. So I thought that their run chase was disappointing. Well, there we are, the end of nine days cricket in Sharjah. It's been a fascinating competition. It always is here. It's an extraordinary cricket ground. It's a wonderful cricket ground. And I dare say you who have been watching the highlights throughout these nine days will have found it hard to believe that there could be a cricket ground quite as good as this one here in the Arabian Desert. It is extraordinary. We very much enjoyed bringing to you uh, the highlights of these nine matches. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>